The United States of America, the supposed freest and most democratic nation in the world, a nation so free that in a public school, a red writing hood book is forbidden for citing content with alcohol, but carrying a weapon in a school is totally legal. The arms debate is such a controversial topic that it generates a lot of reactions on both sides of the issue. The issue of gun control never ceases when a tragedy occurs. The statistics do not lie about the issue of firearms. Each year, in the United States, more than 33,000 people die due to firearms. It is a very populated country with more than 320 million people. But at the same time, Japan, with 120 million inhabitants, barely has less than 10 deaths a year caused by firearms. But to understand why the US has an addiction, or affection for these weapons, it is necessary to go back a few hundred years to understand the much cited Second Amendment of the US that causes so much controversy and debate. We will explore the question, freedom or control? The origin of the right for Americans to bear arms began long before even the nation was founded itself. In the 1700s, the 13 British colonies that would later become the first states of the US, the sentiment of rebellion only grew more and more. The obedience of the colonies had to London had already angered the colonists who did not want America to be a replica of European monarchies such as England, the Kingdom of Spain, and at that time, the French monarchy. The settlers did not want to follow the same path of tyranny and oppression. When the settlers rebelled against the British, they brought about the end of the tyranny of the King of England over the American colonies. This shows that the principle of being able to rebel against a tyrannical power is implicitly linked to the pillars of independence of the United States. And this is how a great majority of citizens view this principle. Therefore, when the Constitution of the United States of America was drafted, a second amendment was included, which is a legal principle that allows Americans to defend their right to bear arms. This amendment says, and I quote, if a well-ordered militia is necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to own and carry arms will not be infringed. This shows that the right to bear arms is literally defended by the Constitution, but the Supreme Court of the United States has repeatedly said that the right to carry and possess arms is not free from restrictions and limitations. The amendment does not explicitly state which types of arms are authorized since the weapons technology was much different back then. But over the decades, the federal government and the state governments have modified the laws to try to liberalize the sale of arms or to exert a greater restriction of it. There are certain types of arms that can be purchased by just going to a supermarket in a specific state, while in another state, the same weapon could have other legal requirements to obtain. Even so, in 36 states, there are no legal requirements for registration of weapons, no permission is needed, and no license is needed to buy and own a firearm such as a rifle, shotgun, or pistol. Due to the lack of these regulations, as well as the ease in which many Americans can buy weapons online or at gun shows, most weapons in the United States are not registered. Only a few million privately owned firearms are registered by the US federal government, but the actual amount of arms owned is much higher. The debate whether or not firearms cause more violence is never ending. Each party always finds arguments in its favor. So I will show you some statistics in two segments from reliable sources and you can create your own opinion. The first being the number of weapons per capita. The United States is a country with the most weapons per capita in the world. It has more than 112 weapons per 100 residents. This is followed by Serbia with 75, Yemen with 54, Switzerland with 45, and Cyprus with 36. If we continue to go down for the following five on the list, we will find Saudi Arabia with 35, Iraq with 34, Uruguay with 31, Sweden with 31, and Norway with 31. What can this ranking tell us? Well. At first glance, we can see that in this list are several developed countries such as the US, Switzerland, Cyprus, Saudi Arabia, Uruguay, Sweden, and Norway. But we also find two states in civil war, Iraq and Yemen. It could be said that the free possession of weapons is a characteristic for these developed countries, although this isn't always the case, such as Australia or the UK. In the case of the US with the largest number of firearms per capita, it could be inferred that each American possesses a weapon, but it really is not the case. According to The Guardian, the possession of weapons in the US is highly concentrated. In one account, only 22 to 31% of Americans say they possess a weapon for personal use. Even so, there are gun fanatics who regularly buy and collect guns without limits. So, they can have in their possession an immeasurable amount of weapons. These gun fanatics represent only 3% of Americans, but these same ones would have more than 133 million firearms. That is to say, half of all the firearms in the US. In summary, this would only mean that 31% of Americans possessed firearms, of which 3% would control more than half of the country's guns. A well-known example was the shooter Steven Paddock of Las Vegas in October 2017. This attacker had 23 guns in a single room. This terrorist was responsible for the deadliest shooting in the history of the United States with a death toll of over 50 victims. 
The second statistic, homicides per capita caused by firearms. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. This is a phrase that defenders of gun rights use against arguments of gun control, and while this phrase is technically true, the sole purpose of firearms is to kill or maim a person, either on offense or personal defense. That is why the mere act of owning a weapon is not a relevant indicator of whether or not a country has a gun problem. In the following graph, you can see the homicides by firearm per million people. The leading country is the United States, with almost 30 people killed by firearms per million inhabitants. The following country is Switzerland, but with a large difference that does not even reach 8 homicides per million people. In that sense, it is 5 times more likely to be killed by a firearm in the US than in Switzerland, even though the two countries nearly equal in terms of possession of weapons per capita. This statistic is very significant, and even though supporters of anti-gun control tries to refute this argument, there is an obvious problem here. Each year, more than 15,000 people die in the USA by firearm, while in Switzerland, one of the most liberal countries with regard to gun ownership, only sees 64 deaths a year. Take into account that Switzerland only has 8 million inhabitants. The US has more than 300 million. And referencing the previous graph and comparing the statistics per capita, the US has a significant difference in terms of gun deaths to the next most liberal country in the world in terms of gun ownership. Now, let's move on to the political aspect for this whole situation which is undoubtedly the most complicated of all. The Republican Party has defended tooth and nail that no arms control or restriction should be allowed, all to preserve the American Second Amendment. Even after the multiple shootings that took place during the Obama administration, the former president unsuccessfully tried and tried again to encourage Congress to take action on the matter. However, a Republican majority controlled both Congress and the Senate. Obama implemented an executive order in the last year of his presidency that made it mandatory for the Social Security Administration to disclose information about beneficiaries of Social Security benefits who receive mental health services. This information would then be included in the background checks, which basically prohibit people with mental illnesses from buying weapons. The Obama administration estimates that this rule would affect some 75,000 people every single year who have a documented mental health issue. However, when Trump came into the presidency, he dismissed this executive order and left it invalid. The political debate is broad. There are proposals from both sides, and there are already certain Republicans, like Marco Rubio, who have begun to support certain very precise measures. Republican Senator Rubio said that he intends to introduce a new bill that will generate restraining orders for armed violence, which gives law enforcement the opportunity to restrain people who pose a threat to the law from buying weapons. Even so, Large segments of the Republican majority believe that the solution is not to remove the firearms from the mentally ill, but on the contrary, arm the civilians and others such as President Trump expressed. After the last Parkland shooting in Florida, Trump said that one solution would be to arm the teachers since that could have saved more lives. But between you and me, I don't think that a class where teachers and students are armed with guns and rifles makes for a safer environment. In the last year alone, mass shootings took the lives of more than 300 innocent people but the worst part is, mass shootings only account for less than 1% of deaths caused by firearms in the US. It is tragic to think that these mass shootings happen every month and a half, on average. But the real majority of gun violence isn't even known by the American population. The National Rifle Association, or the NRA, is an American organization that defends the right to own guns for both personal defense and recreational activities. With more than 5 million members and a great number of sponsorships, it is one of the most controversial entities in US politics. It is well known that the NRA has donated billions of dollars to numerous politicians, including the current President Trump, as contributions to their political campaigns. The NRA has been part of the great debates on gun control in the US. In general, always opposing any reform that prevents the free sale or circulation of weapons. The issue of the NRA is too complex to explore and it will have to be a topic for another video. But anyway, I think we all agree that one of the possible solutions would be to find a solid middle ground. That is, to not completely prohibit the sale of firearms or the right to possess, but to limit the sale of automatic and semi-automatic rifles. What sane person truly needs a weapon that shoots more than 25 bullets per second? Another radical solution would to simply prohibit altogether or make it very difficult to acquire guns. But for that purpose, the United States Constitution should be reworked or amended. And for that, two-thirds of the American Congress and the approval of two-thirds of the 50 states are needed. That is politically impossible. In addition, the millions of Americans who are already armed would not be so willing to let the government take away their guns, and there would be an escalation of violence to levels never seen before. The United States is facing a crossroads where the political debate has left the human side and is now controlled by powerful influences alien to the representatives of the American people. Meanwhile, the American people are bleeding every single minute, day, and week, while their politicians just continue to debate. With only 5% of the world's population, the United States is responsible for 31% of the world's mass shootings. 
Likewise, the US is crowned as the second country with the most deaths caused by firearms, just after Brazil. As long as politicians do not have the will to fix this problem, every second that passes means more blood. So I pass the question off to you. What do you think about the US firearms crisis? What do you consider your possible solution to the issue? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to check out our Spanish and French channel. Links will be in the description. See you next time.